You may be seated. Surely God is in this place. Help me notice. Good morning and welcome to Fort Masking United Church. My name is Sharon Valentine and I am the Intentional Interim Minister serving Fort Maskey here in Halifax. Wherever you are, wherever you are, we are glad that you have chosen to join to worship with us in person or online, where everyone is welcome, needed, valued, and belongs. Today is January 8th, 2023, as Friday was the day of Epiphany, today we will celebrate Epiphany. We gather to worship, to invite the light of the world to shine on us. We will also be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion today. For people here in the sanctuary, you should have received an individual bag with a piece of gluten-free bread and a grape as you entered the sanctuary. For those at home, please gather something to grab, sorry, please grab something to eat and drink so that you'll have elements for communion a little later in the service. Today we conclude our Generation to Generation series that we have been exploring throughout Advent and Christmas Tide. We open our hearts as we keep seeking. And at this time, I'm going to invite Jenny to play some quiet music as Lily and her helper come forward to light our candle. If you have a light at home, I invite you to light your candle now or just hold the light of Christ in your heart. Long after the angels disappear into the heavens, the shepherds return to their flocks, the magi journey home. And the great star sets, Jesus remains, the child in whom we rediscover God's great love for humanity. Jesus remains always to transform our world in love. In this epiphany season, we light the candle, celebrating Christ is the light of the world, remembering we are called to share the light to all, praying for peace and new hope that the light of the world shines in all of creation. Christ's light shines. We gather in this place with gratitude, acknowledging that in Halifax we live and worship on the lands that are the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. We acknowledge and give thanks for the territories and unceded lands and First Peoples of wherever our virtual worshipers are as well. We celebrate all who make this place home. We seek to learn and to value the gifts of our Indigenous siblings. May we listen to their sacred story and continue to work for the day when all will live together in peace and in friendship. May it be so. I invite you now to join me responsively in our call to worship. You will find the words in the bulletin and also printed on the screen. Calling all seekers, all dreamers, believers, calling all glass half empty optimists and lighthouse keepers, Calling all star chasers and bedtime prayer speakers. Bring your questions, your hope, your faith, and your fear into this space. I invite us to just be comfortable where we are. Letting ourselves be grounded in this space. Letting ourselves be open to however we receive and connect with the divine. Let's just breathe it in together and let it out into silence. God of starlight, we look for you in our midst. We walk towards you 
just as the Magi did. We have to believe that love really can change the world. We have to seek the stars beyond the city lights. We keep seeking. Holy One, keep showing us the way. In Jesus' name, amen. It is time to raise our voices in song as we sing together Voices United 82, A Light is Gleaming.
Peace of Christ be with you. I invite everyone to share a sign of peace with those around you. Good morning. My name is John Gillis. Our thanks today to Jenny Trites, our music director, playing piano and organ, uh, to Jay Fraser and the choir, to Diane Gillis reading the scripture, to the Jansen family doing tech, to Allison McDonald and Kathy Evans, uh, as well as Viola and Anne, um, for hosting refreshments following worship, and to Sansia Norm, teaching Sunday school, and Lily Norm, providing nursery care. Um, announcements were in Thursday's newsletter and are printed in the bulletin, and these are some highlights. Please stay for refreshments following worship. Please sign up to host refreshments on the bulletin board in the Tobin Street lobby. You can join on Share and Zoom tomorrow at 11 a.m. to noon for craft and chat. There's a transition team meeting tomorrow evening and a committee of stewards meeting on Tuesday. The Finance Committee reminds all committees and groups that the Finance Committee uh, needs any 2023 budget requests by January 16th. The next men's breakfast is this Friday at 9.30 at Stegenstein on Young Street. Contact Ian McDonald with any questions. The last day to register for Healing Pathway Phase 1 training is uh, next Sunday, the 15th. Region 15 is sponsoring with tuition savings, reducing the $210 fee to $110. Uh, you may recall that Stephanie <coughs> excuse me, shared about the savings for women's briefs and our purchase of 200 pair for her out of the cold. Costco has a sale on men's briefs this month, and if you care to donate, contact Stephanie Coulter. Uh, she doesn't need the money right away, but needs to know how many we can buy. So thank you for supporting Out of the Cold and other causes we support, helping others in need. Thanks as well to all who helped out uh, by providing hope, food for Hope Cottage on Thursday. Happy birthday to Carol Dobson on January 10th. And our blessings and best wishes to all who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations this week. So please join together as we say our new creed, our affirmation of faith, which is unwoven and protected. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Lord made flesh, to reconcile and make it new. who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Under the bright shining stars, with the wise ones offering their gifts, we come to meet Jesus in our own faith story. Our ministries are many. Our gratitude overflows in generosity. We are reminded that there are many ways in which we give. If you have envelopes today, you can put money into the offering plate, either at the front by the pump or at the back by the Queen Street lobby entrance. We, reminded, we are reminded that in our giving, there is the joy of receiving. Our offering will now be received.
Let us pray. Gracious God, like the Magi, we bring our gifts. We bring the work of our hearts and of our hands, offering ourselves and all that we share. Let the light of your love shine through us and these gifts to reach others here and throughout our world. For we ask it all in Christ's mighty name. Amen. So time for our young and our young at heart. Clap your hands if you already have a star word. All right, super. If you did not get a star word last week, I'm going to remind you to take one this week. And if you look over along the far wall, I'm calling that our star string right now. And if you are watching online, please contact me and we'll make sure you get a star word as well. Last week, after everyone left, there was a single star that had fallen on the floor. It was the word play. So I'm thinking that this might be a great word for all of us to think about along with whatever word that you have picked. Take time to play. Some people also call star words star gifts. The idea is that a person picks a star word, or it might be just like on a card or a slip of paper, and then notices and focuses on how that word helps them throughout the year. The Magi followed a star, which led them to Jesus. You might have learned something about stars in the sky, maybe the names of constellations. When I looked it up on space.com, it told me that the North Star, also called Polaris, is located in the constellation known as Ursa Minor, the Little Bear, which includes the group of stars called the Little Dipper. Polaris, the North Star, lies at the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. People use stars in the sky to help with direction. As people of faith, we pray to God and we learn from Jesus, letting the light of the world shine for us, reminding us that we're always working to try our best. We pray for God to guide us. God guides us, Jesus guides us, and Jesus reminds us how to treat ourselves and others. Last week, I also asked if anyone had chalked their doors. And I said I'd talk a little more about it today. For hundreds of years, an epiphany tradition has been to invite a blessing with the chalking of the doorway. It's more popular in Europe than here, but has become increasingly popular in our United Church in the last decade or so. My colleague, Olivia Smith, who works at the General Counsel Office, described it in this way. Legends say that over 2,000 years ago, the Magi, Caspar, Malquar, and Balthasar, traveled over a great distance. They followed a star the whole way and found baby Jesus. And shocking the door, is this epiphany house blessing ritual, a visible sign of our faith and a welcome to all who come through the door. It helps us to remember that God is with us everywhere and that our homes are special. So it invites us, she says, to mark the door with the three initials C, M, and B, and the new, the word, sorry, the numbers of the new year. So for us, we would start out with 20, putting some crosses, C, M, and B, some crosses, and 23, because that's the year we're now in. 
Some folks say, though, you know what? We really don't know that those were the names of the Magi, so maybe that's not the best use of it. The C, M, and B also stands for the Latin prayer request, Christus Mansum Benedicta. May Christ bless this house. So I'm going to invite everyone now, if you're viewing from home, to look around you. If you're in the sanctuary, we can think of this as God's home. And you can also imagine, think about, and picture yourself in your own home right now as we share this blessing for homes. Loving God, bless all who come into our home. May all who enter in come in peace. May all who come in this door find love. May peace and love fill our homes, spread out into the community and into the world. So I just invite us this week to remember, as we see the stars and think of direction, that we remember God is with us in our homes and everywhere. We are going to say our Lord's Prayer a little bit later in the time of communion, so we're not going to do it right now. I'm going to remind us all that the United Church of Canada celebrates an open table. All are invited to share in receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion. Children who wish are invited to go to Sunday school as we sing the next song, or you can choose to stay with your family and take part in the receiving of communion according to your family's wishes, and then go to Sunday school with Santia after our communion, whatever you'd like. I invite us to now sing together the first two verses of Let Us Break Bread Together. And we will conclude with verse 3 following communion. So verses 1 and 2, Let Us Break Bread. feels like to look for God. We know what it feels like to turn our heads up to the sky, looking for stars or signs. We know what it feels like to walk day after day, hoping that we grow closer to God. We know what it feels like to seek. I think that's part of why we come here. We are hoping that in the midst of this messy world, we might catch a glimpse of God 
that will carry us through. I have good news. God is already here. Like a mighty wind, God is moving through this room. God is at this table and every table. God is inviting us forward. The invitation may not be as clear as a star in the sky, but from generation to generation, God is always gathered with God's people. So come to this table with your questions, your doubts. Come with your joys and your gratitude. Come seeking. Come hungry. Come curious. Come open. Come, not because you have to, but because you can. Come, all of you, for there is room for all here. This is God's table. This is God's meal. We are gathered here. Come, let us pray. God of today, tomorrow, and yesterday, like the Magi, we are seeking you. Like the Magi, we are bringing ourselves closer to you, step by step, word by word. So today we ask that you would make yourself known to us. Reach into our spirits and give us a boost of confidence that love is real and we are not alone. We know, O oh God, that we are asking a lot for a group that brings very little we don't have gold, frankincense, or myrrh. We haven't spent the last several days traveling here by camel. We're no magi, but we are yours. Instead, we bring ourselves to this table, to your table. We catch glimpses of you. Speak to us in this bread. Speak to us in the cup. Speak to us through our star words and all the ways we express our faith. Let all be invitations and challenges for our year ahead. Let them be like stars above, helping us always to be looking for you. Holy God, you were the God of yesterday, and we know that you'll be the God of today and tomorrow, for you have loved us from generation to generation. With grateful hearts, we pray to you the words your Son taught us to pray as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night before Jesus died, he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, Take and eat. Whenever you do this, remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup and poured it, saying, Take, this is my blood, a covenant of love. Do this in remembrance of me. We do remember. We remember his life and his love, his friendship, his teaching, his dying, and his rising to life again. In sharing this meal, we live out the ministry of our faith. Let us pray. Holy mystery, God of spirit, we call on you to transform these familiar things as you continually transform the world around us. 
bless this bread and this cup, the wheat and the grape, the farmer and the harvest, the seed and the sower, so that in the sharing of these simple elements in community, we taste and see your goodness through Christ, in Christ, with Christ, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours. God most holy, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take, eat the bread of life. Take, drink the cup of blessing. All is blessing, the fruit of the vine, the bread that feeds us. Let us pray. God of open horizons and open roads, like the Magi so many years ago, we are here seeking you, step by step. We have wandered into this space with the hope of feeling you in our midst, step by step. You have claimed us, loved us, and fed us. So as this new year begins, we pray that just as you have spoken to the generations before us, you would speak to us again. We pray in the name of our light in the world, Jesus. Amen. And we finish now. Let us break bread together. Verse 3, Voices United, 480. Our scripture today's readings come from the Living Translation and Diane is reading from Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 6 and also from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 from the book of Isaiah <clears throat> arise shine for your light has come arise my people let your light shine for all the nations to see, for the glory of the Lord is streaming from you. Darkness as black as night shall cover all the peoples of the earth, but the glory of the Lord will shine from you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see the glory of the Lord upon you. Lift up your eyes and see, for your sons and daughters are coming home to you from distant lands. Your eyes will shine with joy, your hearts will thrill, for merchants from around the world will flow to you, bringing you the wealth of many lands. Vast droves of camels will converge upon you, dromedaries from Midian and Sheba and Epha too, bringing gold and incense to add to the praise of God. 
And then from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. At about that time, some astrologers from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in far off eastern lands and have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed by their question, and all Jerusalem was filled with rumors. He called a meeting of the Jewish religious leaders. Did the prophets tell us where the Messiah would be born, he asked? Yes, in Bethlehem, they said, for this is what the prophet Micah wrote. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, you are not just an unimportant Judean village, for a governor shall rise from you to rule my people Israel. Then Herod sent a private message to the astrologers, asking them to come to see him. At this meeting, he found out from them the exact time when they first saw the star. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go worship him too. After this interview, the astrologers started out again. And look, the star appeared to them again, standing over Bethlehem. Their joy knew no bounds. Entering the house where the baby and Mary, his mother, were, they threw themselves down before him, worshiping. Then they opened their presents and gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But when they returned to their own land, they didn't go through Jerusalem to report to Herod, for God had warned them in a dream to go home another way. For his wisdom for the journey. Thanks, Diane. And I'm going to invite our choir now to share in this anthem, Your Light Has Come. Thank you, choir. Let us pray. 
light of the world, open our hearts, our minds, our being to your presence. Holy Spirit, touch us, inspire us, make your way our way. Guide us in love, and may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be praise to you. Amen. Isaiah calls to us that light has come, that God's presence is truly with us, that the light of God's glory will shine from us, that riches of the people will come to us. Feel yourself shining, radiating that light as light beams that reach out to others. Isaiah is talking of the riches of love, compassion, kindness, generosity, humility, <clears throat> benevolence, hope, joy, peace, comfort, all the things that we can offer being God's hands, feet, voice, and heart in the world. You are the light. We hear this from Jesus, that Jesus is the light, but we are too. Powerful and humbling truth. In the spirit of the Star Word play, my friend Brenda sent a post that she received. If only it had been three wise women. Wise women would have asked for directions, arrived on time, helped deliver the baby, brought practical gifts, cleaned the stable, made a casserole, and there would be peace on earth. Now, there's more to the stories that we think we know. In the story of the Magi, for example, it's the story of the three kings, except they weren't who come to visit the baby Jesus in the stable, except they didn't. It happened on Christmas, except that it wasn't. So, how are you liking the story so far? The Gospel of Matthew says nothing about any stable, or kings, or being the night of Jesus' birth. The Gospel gives no indication that it was on Christmas or even on Epiphany, which is when tradition tells us it happened, which is what we're celebrating today. But we know sometime after Jesus was born, his family was said to have been visited by wise ones from the East, probably Persia, and not necessarily three wise men. There could have been two or twenty. We hear about three gifts, not the number of people. They were definitely not kings and definitely not named Caspar, Melchor, and Balthazar. They were magi, Latin for wise men, and where we get the word magician from. Magi are something like a cross between astrologers and astronomers. So they were sort of like mystic scientists. The English word epiphany is rooted in the Greek word epiphania. An epiphany is a revelation, a manifestation. You can never predict who might get the God thing. You might notice this in your own life. It's like in the story of the Magi. How was it that others weren't seeing this star? We know ourselves that we feel God's presence. We reach out in faith. We know our prayers matter. But it seems not to be the case for some others, and we just can't explain that. The implication for the star is that it was right there, shining brightly for all to see. 
but that not all chose to see it or could see it? Isn't God's light and presence as clear as day to you? Sometimes, if not all the time? Yet people around you haven't got a clue. Even if you can see it, that's not enough either. Those Magi, we are told, saw the light and followed it. Anyone might notice God's Spirit moving. The difference is whether you choose to follow it, to let yourself be drawn to God by it. The Magi were moved to embark on a great journey once their attention was caught. They kept seeking, kept following, not giving up. Brene Brown reminds us to be all in, to be wholehearted. She speaks about people who talk about not wanting to risk being wholehearted. They figure if they only put in a half-hearted effort, that if things go sideways or fail, they might hurt less. But this isn't true. Because if things go sideways and you haven't given it your best, you've got even more that you might be upset by. She says that a half-hearted effort means you are open to more hurt. You know you didn't give your things that you were doing your best. The Magi were demonstrating being wholehearted, risking all. In Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III's new book that released on Tuesday, it was called Dancing in the Darkness, Dr. Moss speaks of threats that his whole church were undergoing at the time when the then Senator Barack Obama a member of Trinity Church in Chicago, was seeking to be president. Moss reports that he was living with a lot of stress and fear. Late one night, he heard sounds in his home. Alarmed, he went to investigate, only to discover that it was his then six-year-old daughter, Michaela, Michaela dancing in her bedroom in the middle of the night. Initially being tired, he was angry, but she implored him to watch her. And he witnessed his little girl letting her light shine, giving it her all. Amid all the darkness, the family stress, he was struck by the wisdom of his daughter, her wholeheartedness, her ability to just let her light shine, and he said it was for him a revelation to trust, even in this bleak and difficult time, to trust wholeheartedly. In his book, Moss also reports another time when a group of protesters came and in a moment of what he called inspiration, Moss invited the entire choir to go out into the street by the church. A hundred voices strong. We'd love that, wouldn't we, Jenny? <laughs> the choir, the deacons and Moss, surrounded the protesters, singing and clapping, singing this little light of mine. The protesters were a supposed church group, and they refused to pray with Moss. But together, the choir, the deacons, and Moss did pray. The protesters left peacefully, not really knowing what else to do. Lights shine amid bleakness, amid turbulence. The power of a song to sing, praise, words to offer in prayer. These are messages that can touch our hearts, 
get us through our tough moments. Encourage us to trust and give wholeheartedly. Moss in his book often quotes, sorry, often quotes Martin Luther King Jr. who had officiated at the marriage of Moss's parents. He talks about persistence of following the light, not giving up. Following, if you will, I think their true North Star, being guided to God, to home, even going a different way when needed. The Magi go looking for God, actively and consistently, day by day. They follow the star until it guides them to Jesus, to God. And after seeing that light, there is transformation, new ways of being, new paths to travel. God is the map maker, and God's map is measured in grace. We've experienced and are experiencing transformation, the light of Christ. Be wholehearted. Trust the Christ light. Who might we shine Christ's light upon as we glow on our way? We are seekers. We are light followers, light beamers. Thanks be to God. Gracious God, strengthen us in our faith to the insights of wise ones who, when faced with an ancient hope of a foreign people and the appearance of a remarkable star, grasped that connection and went and followed that star. We, O oh God, have entered this new year, which is like an unknown country. We don't know what we'll experience as we traverse it. We don't know what obstacles will lie across our path. Lead us, like the wise ones, on a quest of faithfulness, of worship, of hopefulness and giving, of steadfastness in following you day by day. God of today, tomorrow, and yesterday, like the Magi, we are seeking you. Like the Magi, we are bringing ourselves closer to you, seeking you, step by step, word by word. Keep being our map maker, giver of grace, Help us give wholeheartedly, trusting you. We are no magi, but we, O oh God, are yours. Holy Comforter and friend, we pray for the many circumstances and needs in our world. We lift up the causes important to us, people, our joys and our concerns, Receive them all from the silence of our hearts. Holy One, 
we share our prayers in the name of the born Savior who brings hope, peace, joy, and love in and through us. In the name of Jesus, amen. And our next hymn that we're about to sing, and I invite you to stand according to your comfort as we rise in body and spirit. Come and see the light. Voices United, 96. light in the world. Trust. Be wholehearted in all that you do. Dance. Sing. Even in the bleakness, for God is always with us and we are never alone. May the starlight shine in and through you, now and always. God bless you. Thank you.